गाइज वेलकम बैक टू योर आई आई टी सी चैनल दिस इज वेद प्रकाश सिंह एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सेकेंड मॉड्यूल ऑफ एडवांस वाटर मैनेजमेंट सेकेंड मॉड्यूल इज ग्राउंड वाटर मैनेजमेंट गाइज माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू यू इज काइंडली सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड प्लीज प्लीज प्रेस द बेल बटन सो दैट यू कैन गेट द रेगुलर नोटिफिकेशन on our new training programs and i will also request you to please send this uh, link to your professional friends who may be interested or can get benefit from this program in module number 2 ground water management uh, we will discuss uh, uh, the various aspect and points as mentioned here we will try to understand the basic definition of ground water management and we will see the importance of ground water management here and we will try to understand the management oblique governance uh, and, the, and the basic difference different functions of management if you are mbas or if you have gone through the management uh, courses probably you might have heard this uh, terminology planning organizing leading and controlling we will discuss the same technical aspect with respect to the water management and then we will discuss the ground water management how it can be done it will start from the data collection capturing monitoring planning of uh, the datas data analysis and protect part awareness session and legal framework in this session we will discuss all this de- point in detail so that by the end of this session you have put complete information regarding ground water management friend guys let us start with the introduction as you know that water is everything water is our present our past and future and essential to life nobody can deny at this point of time that water is one of the most essential commodities of our life and thankfully we are lucky that water is a most reusable and recyclable commodity on the earth and air is also but we will not discuss the air part here because this will be complex but i can tell you and you will also agree with me if you don't agree with me please put your view in the comment section so that we can review and we can come back to you what is the most reusable and recyclable commodity on the earth and we are happy we are lucky that god has given this blessings for us guys uh, i hope uh, you agree with uh, this both quotes everyone has right to have access to sufficient food and water i am very sure all of you are able to relate with this statement and sentence we are lucky you me and everyone is lucky who has got the access to at least pure fresh water which is disinfected water i can tell you if you go one day if you go in the remote area in the jungle and don't carry the water with you then probably after 4 hours 5 hours you will understand the value of pure water in your life this see, i mean uh, i am the basically a farmer and i understand because sometimes i go in my village and i understand if we are not able to get the water and what happens to our stomach so every time when we go we go i mean with the bottled water so that i mean uh, i mean uh, we are not uh, having some issue of i mean um, this water but i can tell you i am lucky we are lucky you are lucky everyone is lucky who has uh, who can afford this uh, bottled water but there are many people unfortunately i don't say rich and poor i don't say right or wrong but yes this is truth there are many people who don't have privilege to have the bottled fresh water and how far how long this bottled fresh water is safe i do not know there are many studies many documentary that ro water is not good for health we will not discuss those part here but yes we must and we should agree with this statement the statement number second is saying that everyone has right to an environment that is not harmful to their health or well being correct definitely this is very good sometimes no body has got i mean uh, i mean uh, the blessings like us that we have a right to uh, have a right uh, environment 
so that this environment does not harm us and have the health and wealth, uh, health and well-being effect. Therefore, it is important for us to manage uh, and monitor the water and state of water. Groundwater resource and environment, environmental trend we have to monitor because we are the environmentalist. If we don't monitor, we are into the industries, we are into the municipality, we are into the authorities, we are the students, we are aware and trained. If we don't do it, who will do it? <coughs> water management will help to deal the problems related to water sustainability. See, if I am getting water, everyday pure water, what guarantees me that I am going to get this water every day till the death of my life? No, my friend, no can guarantee. Today I have money, tomorrow I don't. Tomorrow I am here in city, tomorrow I don't. So water scarcity is the problem. We can deal this issue with water management concern. We, we can also increase the efficiency of water management and water use and uh, we can also improve the efficiency of water wastage with good water management techniques and systems. Gentlemen, I mean, in our country, the term groundwater and groundwater management has not been given a adequate attention. How many of uh, uh, you agree with this sentence? See, we have some legislations. I don't say that we don't have legislation, but how many of us and does authority successful to give this information to the public to the industries to i mean uh, i mean uh, to uh, all the users but yes i'm not saying we have not started we have started but we are on the way of success we are in the journey of success we are now giving the importance of the groundwater and groundwater management that is why i have come up i mean with a training program of advanced water management because this is the journey this is the beginning this is the journey this is the beginning so now guys it is not typically seen as an important and sustainable water resource for bulk supply that can be managed appropriately. Normally, it has not been given so importance for the water sustainability because we get water very cheaply, very, uh, very, I mean, uh, easily accessible. But you can go and ask those people who don't have the access of water. Go in the remote areas of Rajasthan, go in the remote areas of uh, Uttar Pradesh, to go in the village areas. In some areas you will find that there are people who are struggling with the fresh water. And many companies are dependent for their operation on the groundwater resource. So can you understand, almost 90% industries are dependent on the groundwater resource. And these groundwaters are depleting very soon, very quickly. A generally accepted principle is Prevention is better than cure. Guys, we have to wake up now. We have to stand up now. We have to speak up now. We have to make our plan so that even we can live our lives comfortably and we can give this gift to our successors. It is very essential to understand this very important points. Only not water. We need to understand the water quality. They are our fresh water. We are taking from the ground. But are those water drinkable? You can go in the sub village of uh, Ahmedabad, Naroda and Narol and Batwa, where unfortunately there were some cases. I am not saying that. There were some cases in past the people were pouring the effluent inside the groundwater. They were polluting the water. Guys, again I am saying that I am not blaming anyone. I am not blaming authority, any authority. But I have read many news in the newspaper in early 90s and 95s and uh, 2000 then there were cases i am not blaming you and I'm, my intention is not to blame any authority any municipality this is only my information what i am sharing with you quality quantity are we getting sufficient quantity of water with a good quality are we getting good quantity of water with good water specification impact of groundwater use what is the impact of groundwater use. Can you understand if all the industries are dependent on, on the groundwater and they are pumping the water in thousands and thousands of kl uh, per day, this water is not going to sustain for long. And this there is the impact of the groundwater. 
and there is impact of the ground water with the poor treatment of water it is going inside the water uh, uh, um, aquifer and they are going to damage the water uh, streams gentlemen and ladies i think we have to remember this point with our heart if you are concerned about advanced water management or ground water or if your authority or if your industry please let us remember this point let us disseminate this information to everyone ground water is a main source of water worldwide not in india and we are lucky in india that we have got many rivers but unfortunately all the rivers are dry or the rivers have the polluted water those are not drinkable in india people and most of the industries are dependent on the ground water this is the very essential point ground water means either on surface water or inside the ground but most of the industries are put uh, taking their water consumption on every day basis from the ground so can you understand if the industries are dependent on thousands and thousands and thousands of care uh, of uh, water every day so what is going to happen uh, in the ground water reservoir it is going to deplete accelerated development of industries in past decades has resulted resulted high use of uh, ground water and we are we are able to see it. those guys who are from the village or who are having the bore well they understand every year we are putting our bore well inside down and down and down deeper and deeper of the earth crust why because the upper layer of ground waters are getting dried ground water is the main source for or to provide low cost and drop reliable and high quality for both urban and rural population urban and rural population the ground water is the main source and ground water is again main source to provide low cost drought reliable for irrigation of crops india is agriculture dependent country and for agriculture we are solely and wholly dependent on ground water can you imagine for next 10 years how what is going to happen probably i mean i am able to see this uh, scarcity this problem in next 10 years probably you you are the environmentalist you are into environment you are the manager of industry you understand ground water is a main source of water supply in the most of the country you agree this is like first we have mentioned that therefore awareness and understanding is very important for proactive measurement of ground water please guys i mean um, probably this uh, topic this subject is uh, not uh, related to your operation related to your function but please remember this point and try to give as much as information as possible to your friend guys now we are going to see the definition of management probably this is not directly related to the our uh, water management but since we are going to use the terminology of planning organizing leading and controlling it is important for us to understand these definitions the term management has given by many scientists deft and mercik in 2012 has defined the management the attainment of original goals in an effective and efficient manner through planning organizing leading and controlling organization resources this is the definition of management by deft and mercy the four important pillars of management planning organizing leading and controlling we are going to see these terms in detail in the next coming slides par per mary and parker follett has given the definition of management management is the art of getting things done through the people i hope everybody who are with me uh, are uh, uh, i mean uh, agree with this sentence guys i would request you to please put your comments in the comment section so that i can come back to you based on my knowledge and i can come back to you if i don't know with some other experts guys now it is very important for us to understand two terminology management versus governance groundwater resource management and governance are closely related to each other but they are not two different processes these are the same processes there are some different uh, i mean uh, 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 difference uh, i mean very small difference we will see it governance and managements are different processes but are not different scale of actions 
it may be different processes but scale of actions are not so different we will understand the different uh, and differences between management and uh, governance in the later slide governance and management can take place together at local regional national and a global scale these are two different terminology the scale of actions may be different but the difference of the i mean scale is not so much guys uh, ground water management has got two aspects the first aspect is assessment of hydrology or hydrologics of the water and the second uh, aspect is assessment of environmental aspect we will see that how environmental aspects and its impact are there on the ground water management there are various aspect of uh, the environmental i mean uh, aspect which has got impact on the environment following needs to be analyzed while assessment when we are doing the assessment of hydrology or environmental aspect we need to see that ground water quantity how much quantity is available where and we need to see that the quality quality is a very big subject we have got different uh, i mean module for quality and this is a very important aspect of the fresh water this will also i mean affect the personal life this will also affect the municipality this will also uh, i mean affect the industries groundwater supply supply means where is the groundwater source where the industry where the users what are the different mode of transportation everything we have to uh, understand groundwater demand see demand very and uh, depends on the users the user depends on the locations may be rural area may be may be urban urban area may be industrial area may be other things so we need to see the aspect of the groundwater demand and this demands has and will vary from year to year depends on population population groundwater optimization how we can optimize use of the water so that everybody has got right amount of water and they don't waste the water and how we can optimize the ground uh, water sustainability this is a very important subject sustainability in simple language what i am getting now what i am getting today it i have to get i should get this till the eight, uh, death of uh, uh, till my death till the end of my life ground water exploitation mm -hmm. there are many people few people exploit the water they understand they feel that this ground water is their property and they have right to open the tap when they are brushing where they are washing where they are everything i am i will live in the apartment and i get uh, water when i open the tap i feel that this is my water i am paying for the i mean my maintenance cost so i have a, i have a right to exploit the water and use of ground water so these are the various aspect and points when you are doing the assessment of hydrology and we are doing the environmental aspect Uh, gentlemen and ladies different uh, scientist and author has defined the governance groundwater governance and uh, water management as per their understanding and uh, i fully agree with you and uh, the definition if you see as per moins we can say that the process through which groundwater related decisions are taken and power over groundwater is exercised normally the ground water is uh, carried out and ground water governance is carried out by authority in the power and takes into consideration that requirement of its subject is fulfilled so that means governance is usually the job of the authority who are in the power and takes into the consideration the requirement of its subject as per jonker he is defining the i mean uh, governance the process of decision making is described as a water governance the process of decision making is the governance whereas the definition of water management is saying that the process of implementing the governance the decision is defined as the water management that means those decisions which are taken in the governance this has to be implemented and the implementation part comes as a water management I hope you agree with me please put your queries and questions in the comment section guys now we are going to see the function of management as we discussed earlier that management has got four building blocks and which are very essential 
for managing anything now we are going to have the water management uh, i mean aspect so ultimately the principle remains same first and foremost important block is planning we will see the what are the elements what are the things we need to consider under planning for managing the water management <coughs> after planning the second and foremost important thing is organizing once planning is done then we have to think to organize the things so that we can execute the plan in nice manner and definitely we are going to see the different points what we need to cover in the organization or organizing in the following slides and leading leading is the third important pillar of uh, the management this we will see in the detail and leading is one of uh, the pillar which will come into the execution phase this is more or less you can say execution of the job and this is where it will define the road for success ultimately if you see the all the pillars of this management are very important and uh, success of the plan or success of the target depends on the purity and uh, <coughs> criticality and uh, uh, importance of all the parameters or all the building blocks so controlling is nothing but only you can say that it is a i mean a kind of audit kind of review kind of uh, feedback or kind of uh, i mean checking so you can say if you see when if you have the information and knowledge about uh, isos so in iso 9000 there is a p d c a plan do check and act p d c a so more or less <coughs> in the i mean uh, management this all strong pillar describes and says about that one thing so we cannot develop a framework for ground water management without first discussing and understanding these four blocks it is not possible at all and these functions are so called building blocks provide a valuable step in the process to achieve organizational goal and are related and interrelated to each other here i mean we have to say that these all planning organizing leading and controlling they are linked and interlinked with each other this you can say that without uh, one uh, pillar other pillar cannot succeed so that means to success or to achieve the goal we must have a very good planning very organized organizing leading and controlling this is what it is going to define the success for the goal guys now we are going to discuss the planning phase as we have discussed that planning is the first foundation phase of any management without planning or with, i mean with the poor planning we can not and no one can achieve the i mean uh, target uh, in the prescribed manner and planning is the most important component of the four uh, building blocks because without planning you cannot organize anything you cannot lead anything and then you cannot control so this is going to the foundation this is going to the plinth this is going this is the work which you can say below the ground level not above ground underground below ground so here planning involves the process of selection of the different objectives in water management as you know that in water management it has got four to five strong phases like identification of ground water resources then a uh, maintenance of ground water reservoir or maintenance of ground water resources then you can say third one is a distribution or logistics of the ground water till the user and the last but not least is user itself so we need to uh, i mean make a objective and goal in all this small small section of the water management so that our objectives are smart and uh, specific uh, measurable achievable reviewable and time bound if we have this kind of smart objective then only we can have good 
organization or good organizing then good leading and then good controlling then we need to determine a sequence of steps in the planning stage we must find we have we must break down the objective in successive steps so that we can decide the right sequence of uh, that objective to be ex to be executed and to be achieved the action that needs to be followed to achieve the objective shall also be decided in the planning phase only so when to achieve any objective we need a list of actions and this list of actions has to be i mean uh, done in the planning phase which will define our success and which will define what are the i mean uh, i mean uh, uh, next steps so that we can implement it and after implementing we can get the result as you know that planning requires the process of being first and foremost important thing is be conscious about the challenges as usual for any job for any activity there are uh, road blocks there are challenges there are uh, stumbling blocks so we must need to identify and anticipate and foresee what kind of challenges are going to come to achieve this objective and we must make a plan to encounter this challenges in advance so i mean in planning phase we must be visionary we must be having such a nice experience so that we can see some challenges now most of the challenges in advance and after knowing the challenges we must identify the uh, control measures or encounter measures how to uh, to avoid challenges and if you are able to see all the challenges during achieving the target or objective that means it is nothing better than that that means we have made a plan we have made an objective and we know in advance what are the challenges going to happen so if i know what can go wrong so definitely i will prepare myself this is what in maslow says that things will go wrong be prepared if you be prepared so what will happen you know if something goes wrong what is my action you will not i mean uh, step back and this will define your success rate to predict future economic and business encounters so here i mean in terms of water management we can understand what is the future economics and business encounters going to happen to achieve this target the formulation of objective and steps on how to reach deadline can then be implemented if we know all these things things three things so then formulation of objective and steps on how to reach deadlines can be implemented very smoothly and that is i'm saying that if i know what will go wrong tomorrow with me so i will i will get prepared but unfortunately if i am not so i mean visionary i cannot see what is going to happen with me uh, uh, tomorrow day after after a week after a month after a year after a decade if i am not able to see i mean uh, i mean uh, for shorter distance what is going to happen probably i am not prepared and if god forbids if something goes wrong with me or you then we are broken then uh, our plans gets i mean i mean collapsed so that is why we need to see everything in advance as much as we can do and after the assessment of various alternatives as a condition changes decision can be made on the best steps to help allocate the resources so if i am able to see uh, and the what can go wrong tomorrow i may be having various alternative various alternatives various options because i need to have an option or alternate ways because conditions are going to change today may be a rainy season tomorrow it may be hot season day after it may be i mean uh, snowing season i mean i'm just giving an example there are many things can go wrong tomorrow today uh, things are going smooth my boss has got power for budget uh, 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 approval tomorrow probably my boss is not there due to any reason but if i know these things can go wrong so i can have better alternative options and if something goes wrong i can select the best step to help allocate the resources so if i am aware if i am a conscious if i can see the things so probably i can prepare myself in better way 
And if I can prepare myself in better way, that means I am or you are going to achieve your target. I hope you understand with me. I mean, since we are not able to talk to each other, I would request you to please put your opinion in the comment section because your opinions are power for me. These are bread and butter for me. This will give motivation for me. Good management consists of good planning. Who does not agree with me? I hope 99.99 not. 100% will agree with this and it is always an ongoing process. Planning does not mean once we have planned, it will not change. No, it is a dynamic process. Sometimes we need to keep changing on plan depending on the situation, depending on the I mean um, barriers, depending on the challenges. So it is always ongoing process, dynamic process. We have to fine tune every now and then to make uh, our target achieved with no issues. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to see very briefly about organizing. Organizing is the process for management. Organizing means set up a organization. Set up of organization means set up a group of people. Set up of, set up of group, group of people means set up of task forces. So we need to, I mean, have a organization structure and based on the I mean assignment, we need to allocate the resources to achieve the target. And if we are going to have, if we have a right organization, that means right group of people, right skill with people, that means, and I need to allocate the right resource, right people to right job. If I'm able to, I mean, do that, that means my job is done. That means for good organization or good organization, I must or we must identify all the jobs very precisely. I must know that what kind of skill, what kind of competence that job needs. And then we need to classify the jobs based on the skill, semi-skilled or unskilled. And then we need to assign the right job to right person or you can say you can assign a right person to right job. This is complementary of each other. That means if I know what I am going to do or what I am supposed to do, I must know who can do this for me. And then I need to assign that person for that job. If I assign that person that job, I need to only control it, lead it and then work is done. So here we are saying that organization or right set of people uh, should be there to achieve our plan which is going to be done. Without proper organizing step, organization and business will have no structure and is likely to fall, fail or it is bound to fail, not likely it will fail. Let's say if I have plan and if I have objective, but I don't know who is going to do the job. That means my plan will remain in the paper and it will never be implemented and if it is not implemented, not done. So I am there where I was. I will not move any step. Guys, uh, we have seen planning, we have seen organizing. I hope uh, everybody has understood the intention of this earlier two building blocks. Now we are going to a very important part of the block is leading. Leading can also be described as what is leading? Leading means directing or guiding, or it is also one of the motivation. We are going to motivate the team. We are going to direct the team. We will help people how to do the job. We will also try to influence. Influencing is not meaning, I mean, uh, the person is going to follow me. Influence and encourage and give some examples. See, guiding, motivating, influencing is lead by example. We have to give uh, our own example as well as with someone else's example. You take third party, I mean, approach here when guiding or directing. You, when you are motivating people, when you are in influencing people, you can tell several motivating stories to them. You can tell them a several successful stories. People are able to relate third party. If you are going to tell you that you have done it, probably they will, if you are a very good leader, very influential leader, probably people will follow you. But most of the time, this is my experience of 20 years, 7 years in my career, I have seen that if I tell that I have done it, probably people are least bothered about me. 
But if I tell you that, uh, yes, my boss was like this, I have, uh, I mean, uh, there is one story, then people are able to relate. Because I am the mediator, probably that story is not true, but I can make one story just to guide, guide them, motivate them, influence them. There are some influence, I mean, successful habit of influential people. You need to inculcate, you need to build yourself so that you can have influential quality. See, probably personally, I am not influential man, to be honest, I can tell you. I can talk on the subject, but I cannot influence. So, I mean, everybody cannot become influential man. But you are the leader, you are the influential man, you can inculcate some habits so that you can have influential habits. Communication. Communication is a such an important element in the organization, in the planning, in the organization phase, in the leading phase. This will make your life easy. And we must know the communication barriers. We must know how to do a, a flawless communication. Not flawless, flawless, flaws, flaws, without flaws. Communication without flaws. Forming effective group to achieve the business goal and objective. Like organization, we in the organization, we have the structure, we have a structure of team. And in this case also, we have to have a cross function team. We as a leader can fine tune even every now and then. Because this is a dynamic situation. This is nothing called as static. Once done, it will never change. No, we have to change. We have to temper. We have to mentor on time frame basis so that we are close to the goal. The most important aspect of leading is a good communication skill. Communication skill that, that, that does not mean really speak good English. Communication skill does not mean you have very good command or spoken Hindi. Communication means it's a, it's a body language. Maybe your eye contact. Maybe your facial expression. Maybe your hand movement. Maybe anything. As long as you are able to communicate what you are thinking to other person, your work is done. Leaders should have good and effective problem solving skill. Now, from where this skill can be inculcated or can be enhanced? So, effective problem solving means when any person of your team comes to you, you should not create a problem. You should not confuse them. You, If one person has come with you with one question, he should go back satisfactorily. N not like this. If one person comes with one question, he goes back with 10 questions. So, please do not confuse them. Make the things easy. Make the things linear. Make, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, them, I mean, satisfied. Don't confuse them. Always give straight, short, short, clear and crispy solution. And this comes with the experience and you guys are experienced. Who will other than you are experienced? We are. We are the leader in the organization and we know how to solve the issues. We don't need to be super intelligent. We are not here I mean, in the rocket manufacturing company. We are simply in uh, the organization. We are simple men. We need to try to keep the things easy. Don't make the things complex. I have seen personally in my life that some bosses make the things complex. I go to them with one question and I come back with uh, confusion with the n number of questions and after coming from the uh, meeting from the boss there is a roadblock completely mess so i mean to say that guys we are the managers we are the leader you age does not relate with the leadership age does not have any i mean blocks roadblocks we have to have simple thinking. Simple thinking can create good, simple ideas, good, simple solving skills, building positive relationships. My goodness, this is such a deep, I mean, point in building a positive relationship. With based on my 27 years of industrial experience, I can tell you, relationship is very, very fragile. And it is very, very delicate. 
no money can buy it no car can buy it only your eye contact your facial expression can solve the problem your you are the leader your teammates should understand your eye contact should read what your eyes are saying and i have seen believe me i don't have time to explain how my team has helped me in many many situation i can tell you very short example story of my own life i started my career in reliance industry as a get as a maintenance engineer i was the youngest engineer probably it will be 20 21 years but when i joined reliance in reliance maintenance department people were more than 45 50 years old so you can imagine i was just half uh, then their age when i went there people were disconnected they were not ready to accept me as their boss or as their engineer because they had much more hands on experience and my experience was nothing in front of them probably i was knowing uh, theoretically academically but then i started working with them i started working with them not like a boss not like engineer i like one of their friend i i used to go with them in their uniform i used to go there and replace the motor bearing with my hands to assist them i need to go there and to i mean repair the main pumps i mean as as one of their colleague as one of their helper and then slowly slowly i mean i could able to build a repo and believe me friend and after one year of time every person because i treated them as my mentor i never treated them myself as their boss and slowly uh, after that they have given so much uh, comfort respect you know i mean sometimes there was some maintenance complaint comes in and before it comes to me it goes to the by people and they go there they repair the motor they repair the bearing and in the end of the shift they come to me boss this was the issue and i have solved it see i mean to say that you should able to communicate with emotion with your eyes with your body language and don't treat every anybody as a smaller than you everybody is at par probably uh, they are not as much as edu- educated as you but they have the experience we must respect their experience okay guys i am taking more time of yours leader should have good and effective problem solving skill and building a positive relationship good leading quality helps organization to move towards better goal achievement see achieving the goal does not mean only going and touching the stone maybe there is a good quality of achievement there is bad quality of achievement this is a, i mean a long story i mean i can speak for hours and hours on this subject but since this point is related to ground water management i am stopping myself here i am excited to share with you but i am stopping myself here so that i don't take your more time controlling controlling you can say that it is the last building block of the management but i can tell you it is a such a important aspect and building blocks of any management without this definitely definitely we will never achieve the target on time so controlling as we mentioned that there is a p d c a plan do check act check is controlling we must know our i mean target and then we must do audit we must do checking we must do review this does not mean a problem i mean finding out any i mean any weaknesses uh, in others activity no it is not i mean fault finding i mean uh, i mean study it is a review it if there are some deviations if there are some difficulties i mean uh, that we are not moving as per the target as per the um, i mean aligning with the the goal progress that means we have to act fast and we need to be such a smart or experienced leader then we must need to identify the source of deviation immediately if i am able to find out the deviation and if i am able to find out the source of deviation my work is done that means audit check review is essential part and parcel of life for the management and once you are able to find out the deviation and source of deviation that means my work is done i am able to do a very good control and if i am able to do the control that means i am able to achieve my target now question when to control 
कंट्रोलिंग इज स्टार्टिंग इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द प्लानिंग स्टेज प्लानिंग स्टेज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग स्टेज लीडिंग स्टेज दिस 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 दर डज नॉट हैविंग टाइम डेफिनेट टाइम डेफिनेशन नो आफ्टर वन ईयर आफ्टर वन मंथ आफ्टर वन वीक नो we have to keep on checking there are some formal audit and review there are some informal so informal goes line by line together parallel ground uh, ground water management is described as per wills and a 1987 the ground water management is the assessment of hydrological and environmental aspect of the following this slide we have seen earlier just to rebrush it ground water we have to understand the ground water quantity we need to understand the ground water quality ground water supply ground water demand ground water optimization ground water sustainability ground water exploitation and ground water use when you are going to do assessment of hydrological as well as environmental issue this all point has to be analyzed one by one or together or line by line guys now we are on ground water management flow diagrams here you can say i mean flow diagrams or you can say the successive steps of the ground water management so if you see that ground water management flow diagram should include following as we mentioned that this is not a flow diagram or you can say that successive steps of ground water management first step is data collection without data we cannot start ground water management because we must know that the reservoir ground water quantity then uh, i mean uh, quality and then uh, i mean uh, um, exploitation then misuse many things and then we need to have uh, uh, data capturing it's a date it's mistake by 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 typo error it is data capturing we need to have data monitoring because we don't if you don't monitor it then we cannot uh, do a pdca we need to have very good planning and then next step is data analysis again then protect the ground water i mean uh, resources and uh, i mean uh, having good control on the distribution having good control of uh, over the use and then the very significant part is training awareness and competence we must educate people at various level from top management to bottom management from top user to last users and then legal framework must be there to have a success Uh, ground water management so these are the steps of uh, ground water management or in in your language in other language we can say this is a flow diagram of ground water management guys now let us uh, go through very quickly about all the steps uh, of uh, the ground water management or in the flow diagram first is data collection capturing and monitoring monitoring it is impossible to develop an acceptable ground water management strategy without good knowledge about the resources that we, we must know that uh, what is the uh, type of resources uh, where are the locations how what is the depth there are many more things we need to understand about the resources and after knowing uh, collecting all this i mean data we need to go for ground water management uh, management even ground water management uh would be impractical impractical or next to impossible without having collecting the data capturing the data or monitoring ground water related data there is again a mistake now uh, data so i mean that this is a very very important aspect for the data collection capturing and monitoring for success ground water management many basic information is required to manage the ground water effectively probably we can discuss some checklist in the uh, next slide on sometimes in the program so that you can have complete information about the data collection capturing and monitoring data collection must be done over a period of time if we don't have the data collection for over a period of time we are not able to set the time series let's say for example if i am supposed to start the water management from tomorrow i must have some precedence data over last 2 year 3 year 4 year 
by which I can make uh, some deviation, some 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 behavior of the I mean water consumption of the reservoir of the groundwater uh, situation. So this data collection must be done over a long period of time to create a time uh, uh, series. Without time series, we cannot identify the variations or deviations or differences. Then we are not able to conclude a right conclusion. We can also ask for the existing report uh, from the user to have some basic data, but in most of the cases, we must have field work. We must go in the field and we must do measurement and monitoring uh, and to get a correct data. Collection of data in may include topographic information, geologic information, or an accurate hydrological survey. These are the types of information what we need to for data collection which will give a very good I mean, understanding the behavior and variation against the parameters. Hydrologic survey data may include groundwater pump, rest levels, borehole locations, water abstraction rate, quantity and quality. We know we should know that what is the rate of abstraction, what is the, I mean per day consumption, what is the quality of uh, uh, the water and where the location of the bore well and what is the size of pumps and what is the i mean uh, i mean groundwater level so we must know this thing advanced to uh, have a correct hydrologic survey of the site or location groundwater data collection consists of these following things collecting information on water features this we can collect from the various sources water supply sources what are the different supply sources to the industry, to the people, to the municipality, to the agriculture farm, to anything. Sources of potential and rainfall data. What are the rainfall data? What is the rainfall, I mean, history? We must know to understand correct groundwater management. Guys, process of monitoring data includes an estimation of the amount of water we use. What is the I mean amount of water we use on daily basis or on weekly basis or monthly basis? Uh, maybe you may be industry, you may be uh, agriculture uh, farmer, you may be uh, uh, living in the urban area. And then quality thereof is established. Then we establish the quality of the water. Monitoring is done by testing groundwater quality, recording the amount of uh, groundwater consumption or abstraction, and then groundwater water level. Monitoring is an essential element of any effort to integrate groundwater science with water management decisions and is an ongoing process. This is very truly speaking about the monitoring system. Holiday in a Marine and Box 2007 is narrated. Guys, as we discussed management versus governance. Governance is part of administrator who has got right to formulate legal requirement and implement. So now for legal framework, I am not very, I mean, conversant with the CGWA and legal requirement. And let us go through line by line. Effective ways of creating groundwater management is to establish and implement bylaws. Uh, luckily, fortunately, in India, we have got a very strong, powerful authority, Central Groundwater Authority. And they are the part and parcel of these uh, things. Bylaws must be approved and authorized to regulate the affairs and the services that provides within its area of jurisdiction. So now CGWA is a very strong, powerful body which regulates, monitors anything related to groundwater, I mean, uh, behavior and situation and use in the India. Bylaws are described as a dynamic policy implementation tool that addresses public interest, enforce standards to uh, of conduct and are likely and are just like any other laws in the country. Someone who does not act in accordance with the bylaws can be charged with a criminal offense, receive a penalty or be challenged in the court. Now, I was going through one publication and notification issued by Maharashtra Pollution Control Board. They are saying that polluter pays. So likewise, CGW also have something, the person who is violating, they are going to be penalized. Guys, need for bypass laws. By developing by uh, laws, 
we can manage groundwater resources effectively and place emphasis on the production of sustainability, conservation and the protection of environment. We will not describe it here. By focusing on the need for bylaws, one often overlooks other targeted focus point by laws in groundwater management such as polluted sites in record of the groundwater, borehole construction and abandonment, groundwater quality and quantity, groundwater monitoring and maintenance, groundwater allocation and access. It is important to remember that by laws serve no purpose if it is not implemented and enforced. This is like handicap situation. If I have bylaws not implemented, if not implementation, no work done. Guys, this is very important page. We need to have a possible role of industries because you and me are in the industry. We have a greater role to play, to preserve, to protect, to have a sustainable groundwater. In order to realize the effective protection of groundwater resources, the industries within a management area will need to have a broad understanding of aquifer importance. What is the importance of aquifer? What are the aquifers available nearby our industry or my industry or near me? Aquifer vulnerability. What is the risk associated to that aquifer? The role of groundwater in the broader environment. Potential polluting activities. What in activities as industry we are doing. Is that going to affect the groundwater and aquifer protection? This we are responsible industry. We need to have the broader I mean, uh, knowledge about the aquifer importance, aquifer vulnerability, role of groundwater and pol uh, potential polluting activities and aquifer protection. This is a responsible industry's view, vision and mission. Guys, to summarize what we have learned in past, uh, I mean, uh, half an hour for a sustainable groundwater management the following actions are necessary first and foremost action ensure the implementation of existing strategy regulations and guidelines on groundwater management such as an artificial recharge strategy and others so we need to identify what are the recharge mechanism artificial recharge strategy and others establish a ground resource governance section which will ensure the support to water services institution in the operation, maintenance and management of groundwater supply scheme. This is very important thing. We need to influence the users, operation, maintenance and management of the groundwater supply. Functions must include evaluation of artificial recharge potential and uh, conjective use schemes. A key finding has been and that groundwater management links to groundwater dependent sector like agriculture, rural development, health and environment are not well. Guys, with this, I mean, uh, we are on the verge of uh, finishing the session. Now, I think uh, we can take one exercise and task. This task you can do on your own. The function of management. So here you are requested to make four bullet points in each building blocks of the section of management, planning, organizing, leading and controlling in respect, in perspective of your organization. No need to share with you. Yes, you can make your own plan. You can discuss with your management. You can take objective in your EMP. You can take environmental management plan to improve, to sustain, to I mean uh, enhance the groundwater um, uh, uh, quality quantity and enhancement guys i mean uh, uh, definitely i mean uh, i hope uh, these informations were useful for you i request you to please subscribe the channel and put uh, and press the i mean bell button so that you can receive the regular update you can also share this link with your professional friends so that in case uh, they need they will be uh, uh, using this information guys with this thank you very much have a nice day jai bharat jai hind thank you